Orleans, Alexandria. Preview in the opening weekend of the XFL with Cole Kublik in the second hour today. Stick around at 8.30 this morning. It's also Free Beer Friday here on Off the Bench. Get over to Mockler Beverage. Get back to us inside the huddle. Make sure and drop the hashtag there. Looking forward to our next guest. It's always cool to catch up with one of the uh, one of the brightest minds, smartest dudes, man. Always enjoy the conversation with uh, newly named head coach of the Baylor Bears and former defensive coordinator for LSU. Um, spent some time in Baton Rouge. Fell in love with the city, he and his, his family, but it was his time to move on, and now he's got a great opportunity in Waco to lead the, uh, the, the Bears. And joining us this morning is new head coach Dave Aranda here on Off the Bench. Coach, good morning. Uh, great to catch up with you. Hey, good morning. I'm happy to be with you guys, man. It's good to be back. Yes, sir. As we mentioned, uh, you, you've been around football for a long time, um, and you, you run into a season like you guys had in 2019, 15-0, Heisman Trophy winner, all types of award winners on that staff and, and on the field. Um, just being a part of that, what was that like? It's really special. I told, um, I remember standing in front of the team, of the defense, Prior to the last game, you know, I've never been on a team like this. Got so much respect for everybody, and just the—I mean, at that point, I, we had been going for about a year in terms of uh, being together and walkthroughs and meetings and and all of it. And so, to have that level of dedication and just the 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 want to, the effort, the um, you know, hey, if something's broke, let's fix it. Hey, um, we can get better here. Let's meet on it. Okay, got it. We're good. And all of it, man. I mean, just the, you feel, you felt like everyone's on the same page. Everyone's working for a standard. You know, and you give all of the credit there to Coach O and, and the leadership that he got, he, he put in. Uh, the players really bought in. And so it's just real special, especially at that late stretch. You just felt the momentum piling up. Yeah, and, and it was the defense. I mean, post Ole Miss game, I, I think that the defense was the the difference in that run. And so, Coach, I, I guess my mind, when I hear you talk about how close that team was in relationships, my mind immediately goes to how intimidating is it then to kind of leave all that behind and then suddenly, you know, midway through January, you're forming completely new relationships at a completely new place. Yeah, it was, you know, that that's so that week, you know, the Monday is the game, and <clears throat> I think we get back to the hotel like at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., something like that. And I, family's up there able to, I think we uh, had maybe a cocktail or something and then crash and then wake up. And I think there was um, the interview for Baylor was, was that was that day, the next day, Tuesday, and it was a it was a long five hours, something like that. So it's, <laughs> it's basically you're playing another game, you know what I mean? And so, just the stress level of Monday followed by the Tuesday. I think that Tuesday night, I'm just like, you know, I'm kind of a ghost um, I'm upstairs and everything. And um, Thursday, you get the call. I'm getting ready to get ready to go to um, the White House with everybody, and then you kind of change plans. And then that night, you're uh, meeting the your new team at Baylor. And so when you, when I walked in front of them, you could sense, um, I, very similar in terms of just the makeup. I mean, we've got here, uh, great leaders. Um, we've got just great kids, great people. So you, when I walked in front of the team that Thursday night, you could see, um, you know, you could sense the closeness with the team. I could, you could really sense some hurt with the team. You know, I thought, you know, the relationship they had with Coach Wool was, was very, very strong. And so all of that, I mean, that fires me up because that, that shows you that what, what they're capable of. I'm, I watched the games they played last year and, and just the fight that they put up and just the how much they achieved. And uh, you could see the, the, the cohesiveness of, of this group. And it's, it's excited to be able to get them to hunt for you, you know. So I'm, I'm excited about that opportunity, but... It is just that whole week was just a crazy week. I can put myself in, in, in your position and think how cool it would be to call a former mentor and offer him a job. And, and you had that opportunity with Ron Roberts, who means so much to your coaching career. Right. Um, right. And, and he was just right down the road in Lafayette, and, and you make him the defensive coordinator. What's it like building a staff and then specifically a guy like Roberts who means so much to you being on that staff? Yeah, just, you know, the – just having the opportunity to be on a bunch of great staffs. And I look back at the one at LSU with, you know, guys like uh, 
Coach McMahon and, um, you know, Coach Hinsminger and um, just really just salt of the earth guys, man, just good people, really smart football guys, guys that love ball. But, got, um, you know, James Craig would be another one. But got, with great families, guys that just get it. And that's just so important, you know, cause the ups and downs and just the um, – the never know what's coming up next of a football season. You just want people that can just can just ride the wave, man. You know, what I mean, and get you back to shore. And so, to to build that, to build that, build a staff with guys like that on your own is pretty cool. It's a, I think it's a huge, huge piece. And I look at Ron and just having the ability to learn so much from Ron and take so many concepts from him, um, and for me at an early age, and then. You know, I'm excited for Ron, man, because he's been at, you know, he's he's mentored myself, Carl Scott, Pete Golding. There's countless others, and he's always kind of been in the background. And for him to be at the forefront now and to have his chance and everything, I know he's going to be successful. It's just so cool to be to be a part of that. Dave Aranda, new head coach for the Baylor Bears, joining us here off the bench, ESPN, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Coach, you've been tabbed as, as an elite defensive mind, one of the best in, in the sport. What did going against that offense every day in practice do for your defense and do for the defensive coordinator that, that you are, the way that you think of, of that side of the ball going against Burrow, Brady, Ensminger, and all those weapons every day? Yeah, that's a really good question. And this one could probably be long, this answer. I think it changes. It, it, I think the game is changing. You know, and so I was talking about this with Ron um, the other day. I just think, you know, prior prior to this year, there is there is to me just having a base defense, having your your creepers or your simulated pressure, having your blitzes, and um, you know, being able to play whatever comes out in your base, being able to mix it up with your pressures was always kind of the thought. Try to get them in in bed and your most advantageous situations uh, to pressure and, and that what changes though is just with the, the offense that we saw last year and then I think it's catching on with other with other people I think you know Clemson had there's elements of that I thought Oklahoma um, there's elements of it and so elements of like gotcha plays whatever you're in this play that I've got on offense beat your play you know hey w- w- when you're when we show you this formation line up to us one or two ways. If you lined up in, you know, um, A, we've got these two plays that just destruct the way you're built. It breaks your rules. It outnumbers you. If you line up in B, we've got these two plays Mm -hmm. that just destruct how you're built, break you up. And so that is, I think, fairly new on offense. And so what the opposite of that is like, hey, we're running our offense, whatever we got. Hey, whatever they come out, we're just going to run it. it. We can adjust everything. It's good. We'll get out of this bad play and, you know, we'll take three yards and we'll get to the next play. <laughs> what what Brady and Insminger did was whatever you guys line up in, we've got a play that just busts you up. Wow. And, and and you need a – you need a – um I think a guy that's that's calling the shots um, behind the center that can handle all of that, and we had one. Uh, but Clemson was similar. Uh, Oklahoma was similar. I mean, people get to it different ways. And you know, I think defensively, just seeing that, and you know, in spring, and <clears throat> you know, we've got leverages and on things, and we're playing to our help, and we're still, you know, the QBR. I think during a uh, spring ball was started like in the 118s and ended like in the 140s and we can never get it you know, I mean those are just uh, unbelievable numbers so it's like we're really bad or they're really good and it happened probably was a little bit of both at that stage of it and um what what changed for me on defense was that we have to do the same thing and you know and talking with Ron he he's visited with other people in the league, I think like Georgia, for example, there's a couple other people, Clemson for sure. They do it that way as well now. So an offense will line up in a formation and the offense is trying to see what you're in to get the bit, the plays that beat you. And then defensively, you're seeing how they line up to call the plays that beat them, you know, because offensively they line up in a certain look, the tight ends in the core, the tight ends out of the core, um, the backs near, the backs far, um, 
you know, formation in the sideline, um, you know, two backs, whatever they do out of those formations, they, when they line up in those formations, they do these two things. So our best call on defense is this one thing or this, this other thing. So when wait to see what they line up and call that. And so when you watch Clemson, they were very much that way. And yeah. And thus, throughout the year, we we were that way too. As it went on, and a lot of that was a was a reaction and an adjustment to what we were seeing on offense. And wow. I thought we played a lot better because of it. So it, it's almost like boiling it down. It's like bringing over some of that offensive philosophy to the defensive mindset. So do you have like something like a like a call sheet then, like with your your best plays or kind of kind of right in front of you at all times when you're when yeah, you're calling those? Yeah. yeah. So like an example would be like we played. Um, who is it? Uh, Georgia, and um, Georgia's they they you know they knew what we were doing prior to that game. I think we had we had played A um, and M, we had played Arkansas, and we were kind of waiting to call the call a defense. And so there was a lot of motion. There was some hurry up in that game, which Georgia hadn't really shown, but that was all a part of trying to get us off of it. But there was one example in there where they lined up with both tight ends on the line of scrimmage, which prior to that game, they had done quite a bit. And we were anticipating it you know, just being a 3-4 and that to build a big C-gap in space. And so anyways, we had a call. We called it smoke where we were going to rush Grant Delpit in the C-gap because anytime both tight ends were on, the tight ends blocked out, whether it was run mm-hmm. or pass. And so um, with this smoke three was Grant as a fourth rusher rushing in the C-gap and playing cover three behind it. And smoke was only versus both tight ends on the line of scrimmage. So there was no other time I would call it. So we're just waiting to see. Our, and and one, once Georgia lines up and both tight ends are on the line, it looks like they're going to get lined up. We can't wait to really see it. I'm just kind of, it looks like they're lined up. Okay, smoke three. And then, you know, that was a big sack. So like, that's an example. That's I think Texas A&M, they're in a bunch look. We can run a, a six-man pressure, play two under three deep. It's only versus that look that we want to run that. So, like, those types of things all stem from that kind of offensive thought. And so it's, you know, I, th- I think there's other guys that were already doing it prior, like Clemson and Georgia. But I think that the game is changing more to, like, hey, You've got this play. What play do you got? I think my play is better than yours. And, you know, it's a big, it's a, it's for the fundamental, fundamental part of you as a coach and kind of the, you know, hey, let's, I think all of that is the ground floor and that has to be first and the foundation of whatever you're doing. But at some point, you're going to have to get to, okay, we got our base set. Now they got this. What do we got to answer it? Uh, because all that stuff uh, is coming. Uh, last year was a good education in that. Raise your hand if you'd like to watch film with Dave Aranda. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, I could sit okay, here coach, and I, listen to this all I got, day. I got 45 seconds, and, and I'm sorry to cut you off like this, but how good can Derek Stingley Jr. be? He can be great. I think the, you know, he's he's humble, and he's got a servant um, a servant's heart, and so he wants to do well. You know, he wants to please. Um, not, it, it, he, he doesn't. It, nothing's too big for him. The stage ain't too big. Um, he wants to, he wants to be the best. You can credit his family, just his upbringing, just all of it, man. I'm just a huge fan of his. I think, you know, he's going to continue to push himself. I mean, his family's going to continue to push him. Corey does a great job. Um, he's going to be fun to watch. Um, everybody's proud and happy for you and, and, and Baylor Definitely. coach. They got a great coach in you and tell meatball. Hello. And, uh, we're pulling for the Baylor bears. That's my guy. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. You got it. Thanks, there he coach. is. Dave Aranda checking in from Waco. We'll close it out. Ooh, hour one next. That was hot. That was Off good. Off the bench with Kalana and T-Bob. <sighs>